Go ahead and fasten those sofa seat belts up, y'all, because today we're going to be dissecting the FBI interview with Letitia Stalk that was shown in court during her trial, and it had me seen double. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to The Sofa, which is right behind me with our trusty sidekick, Mr. Roscoe, and my name's Paul. Now today we're dissecting that video like I discussed in the opening, and the way the video will work is I'm going to put clips up from the trial of the FBI interview with her, and we're just going to do commentary about it. So if you're looking for a video that is just nothing but that, this ain't the one for you because I'm going to be dropping my thoughts along the way, and then overall at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and dive in. Sheriff's Office and FBI have worked together, mm -hmm. and we found enough, you call it probable cause, mm -hmm. for a warrant to be issued. So that's why you're here today. Okay, a warrant for what, though? It was for the murder. What of murder? Gannon, Gannon Stout. So Gannon is murdered? That's what the evidence shows. Okay. And I'm happy to share with you evidence, but we can't have a conversation unless you're advised of your rights. Okay, what are my rights? What happened? What murder? So Gannon's murder. Oh my God. Can't roll my eyes hard enough. I mean, and this is the very beginning of it, y'all. I was just like, oh, this is going to be a long several hours, which it turned out to be. Now, remember, if you haven't been following this, this is Leticia Stauk. She has been accused of taking the life of her son, stepson, Gannon Stauk. She's currently on trial for it. She is basically trying to say that she had, uh, you know, a disassociative identity disorder. She had a moment of insanity when she did it. So she is like low key admitting to it in a way, right? But she's trying to excuse herself from accountability. And that is the theme with her. Wear those lenses to watch and listen to this through. You are watching, I'm talking, and again, I'm not a psychiatrist, so this is just my opinion. We're talking just the level of like narcissism in this video is enough to turn your stomach. And actually, if you've dealt with people like this in your lifetime, you'll probably find this triggering because literally it had my blood boiling as I was watching. So again, this is the very beginning right here. And that's where these agents are starting off with is somebody who's literally at ground zero of taking any form of accountability for anything that took place. Well, um, and I'm not. I'm not saying that's what happened to you. I can help you because what you're charging me with is not, or whoever is not the case. Okay. Gannon is alive, okay, and I can help you. Okay, great. But see, here's the problem. When I reached out to people about getting help, I said, "Hey, I need someone who's going to help me to help you guys." I couldn't get that from anyone immediately turns it around onto them. And again, I say this in all my videos about her and people like that. Imagine living with her and having a normal disagreement about something or even trying to make a life decision or for that matter, going out to dinner, right? I can't fathom what she put people through on a daily basis. So this is going to be her theme throughout this video is I can help you but I need blank from the agents. I need protection. I need this. I need that. In addition to changing her story up multiple times. Honestly, she is in the same leagues for me as like Daryl Brooks, um, Anthony Todd. I mean, this level of absolutely not willing to, you know, take accountability, blaming every last thing on the situation and their life on others. And I've been begging every single day, please, please, please don't think this. You, I know you're expert in your field, okay? I know you may say you have whatever evidence you have, but it's just not true, okay? Now, again, another theme with Leticia, and he'll call her out on this multiple times, is how concerned she is with what other people think of her. That is her main concern. She is not concerned about Gannon. She is not concerned about anything to do with him. Now, of course, we know at this point she's not concerned because she did that to Gannon. And that's what's psychologically to me interesting to watch with her because she is, doesn't seem to be able to take herself out of the situation, look at it from like a, a you know, an overall, an all seeing eye type thing and say, huh, a grieving mother who's trying to say that there's something else would go, going on would act like this. Maybe I should not care as much about what people think. Maybe I should interject um, some, God, I can't wait to see Gannon. Uh, I can't wait to get my hands on him. She doesn't do any of this normal stuff. Her main focus 
is what other people think of her and then coming up with these next level lies. Not. It's not true that Gannon's dead. I'm not going to sit here and say 100%. I can tell you that there's really things that wouldn't have occurred that I can help you guys with to know that. Now, one thing that's going to be like, a, I don't know what you call it when you build up something and it's like, eh, you know, fizzles out, is this whole thing of she can help them with something. It takes hours to get there, right? Hours to get there. And then it's just nothing. Another interesting thing is listening to this agent on the stand talking about how she deflects. And anytime you get close to any kind of an answer, she then pivots the conversation away to something else. My whole thing is, and oftentimes in these cases that we watch like this, we see the same type of behavior. Hers is so next level out there, what she's trying to sell to them. It just doesn't make any sense. It reminds me of Anthony Todd. And again, many of these people, I'm just kind of singling him out because his story was so over the top. Uh, that was the man who took the uh, lives of his family members down in the Disney town. I can't remember the marathon, Florida or something like that. Maybe I might be wrong on that. Uh, but Blamed, I mean, the story he came up with to blame it on his wife, right, was insane, okay? And that's the same thing that Leticia is doing here, but she can never really even get the story out because she's so concerned about just dangling it in front of them. I'm not sure where she thought this would ever go. You know, especially at this point, she's in custody, she's been arrested, and they're going to transport her back to Colorado, and I'm just not sure what she thought. I, I Part of me thinks that she honestly thought they were just going to let her walk out the door. You know, that she was going to talk her way out of this and let her walk out the door. And clearly, that didn't happen. And until I know that I, I got to get help from some people, other than someone just having me in a room. You got to get help to do what? I got to get help to give everyone what they need because I'm going to need my mom protected. Okay, I'm going to need my brother and sister protected. And most importantly, I mean, Harley protected. And on that same note, I'm also going to need other people in Colorado protected. And see, people say FBI can offer that protection. We can. How? How? If it involves it, an 11 year old, if it involves finding an 11 year old, then we can. And it means that we can have new identities. It does. Notice how she slips the we in there at the end, right? She's thinking she's going to talk her way out of this now, but it, what shocks me with it, it doesn't shock me, I should say, is that she, so she's like trying to sell this, like, look, we need protection. She's going this whole cartel thing without saying it. Uh, that's how I interpret this. But she never gets to any of the information. It's like she BSs them and then it's like, okay, well, what is it? She still can't get that out, but she doesn't think that that's not a red flag. That's just what baffles me about it. Now, let's also take note, what makes this interview even better is that this FBI agent is so calm and collected. I'm trying to imagine her in other situations with other interrogations that we've seen by people who they lose their cool. This woman would make the most calmest of people lose their cool, right? But this guy just keeps his even keel throughout this entire thing. And it really, for me, it magnifies the craziness of these stories that she's coming up with. Um, so let's continue. There's nothing that happened at any house. Nothing that happened at any house that would have hurt, harmed, murdered, done anything to anyone. Now, she'll say things like this very confidently, but then when pressed on it, she retracts and doesn't want to say this and doesn't want to say that. I think it's because, number one, she's obviously making it up. She knows exactly what happened because she did it. Number two, I think she's lied so much she can't keep up with all the lies, and so she's kind of freezes and has to backtrack and deflect and do this because you you literally just can't keep up with the amount of lies that she's told. But even when faced with the damning evidence of like blood in the house and all this stuff and even her own admissions, she still just will sidetrack all of that and continue barreling down this, you know, highway of lies. Uh, we are reporting this for your integrity and mine. Right. But if you'd rather not say something, I mean, if I would rather you just say, I don't want to answer it instead of telling me something that's not true okay. because there's something called false statements, which is a thousand, it's U.S. code 1001 to where if you lie to us during an investigation, that can be a year of prison time. Now, this part also is interesting because, again, he calls it out, but in such a calm manner where, you know, look, I would rather you say I don't know because he's just calling out. 
don't lie to me. If you don't know something, don't make it up, right? I don't think she gets that, though. Or she's so concerned on what she's going to say next, she doesn't hear what he's saying. And then most importantly, she doesn't want to know because she knows she has to lie because she knows she did it. In regards to that, do, were you of sound mind? I mean, what, did you have, are, are you undergoing any treatment for anxiety or any depression or anything like that right now? Or? I mean, like, you mean, like, I don't, I mean, I've had anxiety since I was just like 16, 17 okay. issues. But, like, as far as, like, um, undergoing, like, any kind of special treatment, you know, like, sometimes I might have to take, like, a little rest. Right. But um, I didn't see, like, counselors or anything for any kind of depression. And then plus two, like, right now, with the man, already gone medical records i'm eight weeks pregnant so i can't speak any kind of okay. like uh I, I, I mean i wish i could because then it would help a lot with anxiety but now, I think this part's interesting because clearly she's digging her hole in her little insanity plea with statements like this. There's no build up to this moment of documented you know, stuff going on with her that's not outside the norm, right? Um, now, granted, she didn't need this to bury her story because she's done that herself on multiple other you know, occasions and whatnot. Um, but I do think it's interesting that already right here, these the agents are covering their tracks. Now, remember, the DA and somebody else is like in the other room listening to this. I'm sure they're saying look, you know, ask her this or that or whatever the case may be, right? Um, but I do think it's interesting. I'm sure she's sitting over there half sleeping at the table, flipping everybody off, thinking, oh my God, just get it over with. Right. Okay. But so I, you were of sound mind when you were talking to Al. You were just, you were upset with him and upset with the situation of him not being by your side through this whole thing. Right. And But then at the same time, like, I have to sit back and think, you know, in a person's brain, you don't, you hear a hundred different things, you do get, do whatever. I just wanted him to know, because he knows, like, I've been, I've been taking care of our kids, like, for so long, why he's now, a couple of things in this clip. First of all, I've been taking care of these kids. This is an ongoing thing, and the agent will talk about this on the stand. This is clearly a motivating factor for her. She wants it to be known, her sacrifice, what she's been doing. This, to me, is we're seeing some truth behind what makes Leticia tick, right? And this whole thing of taking care of the kids and maybe feeling... Uh, uh, not uh, ungrateful or, you know, not like a thankless job. I can't think of the word right now. Um, but like nobody appreciated her, underappreciated that type of thing. So this is very big. She wants to take all this credit for this. Now, also, as she goes into these discussions and she's basically sitting here telling him and she does tell him, you know, oh, the things that I said to Al, that was I was mad. I was upset. I was this. She Again, she doesn't understand that it's like that is so abnormal for someone who allegedly had nothing to do with the event with their, their stepson to be concerned about that and I was upset with Al so I said all that thing out of spite or anger like that does not click with her how absolutely next level that is and we'll play this through 49 minutes and 12 seconds <laughs> so what does an argument look like with Gannon have you guys ever argued um like maybe like in rural beach you know uh we would have been like we had a, we're so much alike so we are so much alike in terms of we both have stomach problems really, really bad. Um, we both have like uh, anxiety, so like, so to speak, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's so like he's so like kind and, and like uh, kind hearted. To, and then the point of like we can get upset about something, but then the next minute he'll be like I am. He'll be like, oh, you know, look about something. We'll just say something or. And he had tremendously increased the amount in Myrtle Beach. I don't think I ever heard him be like, I love you, or like, you know, like, uh, I mean, like, the holiday might come, you know, they just say, oh, just write something, whatever. But like, since having him all the time, it became more of like, I, I would hear, I love you. Now, hearing her talk about Gannon, first one in the beginning where she's like, he's just so, like, kind. It feels so forced coming from her. It does not feel authentic. This, to me, sounds like a human that would have a very hard time 
giving anyone a compliment, even her own children, whether they be stepchildren or biological, whatever, um, because it feels so unnatural. And then the way she gets into the conversations about, you know, hearing the I love you's and stuff like that. I mean, again, I'm sitting here, I'm like, I can't imagine what this kid's life was like, especially Gannon, because I do think that she just had this personal thing with him uh, that ties into, you know, him being Landon and our son and the whole nine yards, right? Uh, but hearing her talk about that, I'm just like, yeah. Now, also the way she plays it down, did y'all argue much? No. And I'm like, oh, please, I don't believe that. We've already heard evidence of how she was with Harley, her own daughter, on the stand and back talk and things of that nature. So you can only imagine if that's how she is with her own daughter, uh, what would she be like with Gannon, especially seeing what it led up to? I think that they, and, and maybe they didn't have arguments in her mind. Maybe he was too scared to back talk to her, you know, because God only knows what the repercussions would be. You know, I think I, I wanted him to see that. It's a certain incident. incident. Like, you the biggest disagreement you had was this a certain time or you no, we never talking? had like big like there was never any like a uh, big all out no 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 we never had any big all out things mm -mm, no these personality types always downplay stuff you know they, they end up on the on the stand for taking out either whether it's their whole family or you know in this case Gannon but to listen to them talk about their relationships and stuff I mean it's leave it to beaver kind of stuff right I mean just you know happy go lucky everything's fine you would never guess in a million years that they arrived at the situation that they did to end up in court uh the candle incident. Can you tell me about that? Okay, so Gannon wanted to, I don't remember if he wanted to stay up 30 minutes. I can't remember. There was something he did that allowed him to earn some extra time. But there was something he did. But Albert had grounded him from playing the switch. So he wasn't allowed to, you know, play the switch or whatever. He was only allowed to like, to watch the movie. Now, here we go with the candle story. Now, again, at this point, we've heard so many different stories, and even the FBI agent will say the same thing. I mean, at this point, this is like a month into this whole situation. So they've heard it all, right? Um, and again, I come back to this, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts again because I enjoy reading the comments about people's different theories, and it's just that on this part. But this whole thing with the candle and the burning of the arms and the switch, you know, I just believe that she went downstairs something happened something set her off i do not think gannon was doing anything with the candle i think she has made that up i think she either intentionally burned him i think she either started to try and light him on fire after something something you know or burn the house down something took place but i do not believe for one second that he was trying to play the switch with the candle going and it fell over and did this and that at all now it could be that he was playing the switch and this could have been what triggered her after a series of events throughout the day where she was just kind of over it type situation and this was the one thing that made her go over the top and do something to him that she knew no one could ever interact with him again he could not see someone else again because whatever it was she did he would either tell or it would be visible the fire that's out so what did the fire look like uh, it wasn't, it wasn't like huge. It Where was, was it? In the carpet? On the sofa? Uh, I feel like it was on like one of the covers. On the covers? Was the cover on the sofa though, or was it on the floor? Oh, I don't remember. I just remember it was in the small location. It wasn't a big enough fire to... to um, what color was it? Do you remember? Was it yellow or red? Now, this part's so frustrating because to me, in my opinion, she's very clearly lying here. She doesn't remember anything about this fire. And in other interviews, and stuff, nothing to remember. I don't know what the flames are. I'm not a professional. Here's my thing. If I were to walk into another room in my house and someone had started a candle fire, yes, there's going to be adrenaline. Yes, it's going to be a scary moment. We get it out. Obviously, it was not bad enough to where they even needed to call a fire department or anything like that. She's making it out like, oh, we had to run out of the house. And, and then even in the other interview she did, she's like, and I forgot Gannon. I'm like, but it's his room that was on fire. I mean, the whole thing. But doesn't remember or where was it i don't really remember and this is what tells me i'm like she mm -mm. there's i do not believe for a second that she went there and just randomly found a fire going i think she knows exactly what she did with it but she doesn't want to say because she's afraid that if she does they could like 
backtrack that to be like, well, yes, we, uh, uh, you know, backtracked the fire to realize that it was lit with a candle on the covers and there's no way Ganon could have done that type situation. And this is what makes me think, okay, had she drugged him and then tried to light him on fire? You know, like what exactly happened in those moments? And again, we'll never know, unfortunately, because you can't trust a word out of this woman's mouth. What did you tell your school as far as why you didn't show up that day? Or that day, I didn't talk to them about anything. That day. Your school, you didn't. Mm -mm, not that did day. you just not show? Were the class was waiting on you? Or? No, 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 no. The okay. So what happened was I transitioned because I was like, okay, I wasn't really a teacher anymore. And I was like, okay, I have to do something until this like the whole flight attendant thing started. So I had to do something and so just not mm -hmm. have money or whatever. So I got on D and D. Okay. What yeah, I get you didn't sign contracts, but were they planning for you to come in to do something on Monday and you had to call in? I, I never called in on Monday. I already told Did you them. Text down or something? No, on Thursday or Friday, I'd Did already told them. them. Okay. On Thursday or Friday, I'd already told them that I wasn't coming in. Like for, I didn't go in Friday either. So, Mr. Grusing, um, when she's giving you this answer, what information did you have already about uh, her employment on that Monday? I had, and I think in the four o'clock a.m. hour, she had texted to say one of her relatives had got hit by a car and was killed. And that's why she was not coming into work. Now, this is the part that just gets me right here. She has to feel like a total idiot sitting over there at that table listening to this, right? Look at how confidently she lies about stuff. And he knows already that she did call out and she has this convoluted thing. Well, I didn't sign any contracts. I didn't do this. And maybe that part could be true. And so she's justifying it by saying, well, I didn't have anything to do this, even though they were totally expecting her to be there and she did call out. Now, can we also talk about the fact that she didn't call out with explosive diarrhea or something else that you could totally use that would make the person you're calling out to not want to question it? You know what I'm saying? She goes for the full gamut. A family member got killed by a hit and run or whatever. I'm like, who, like this, what, why would you even say that, right? Number one, that would be so easily traceable. That would be something that would make red flags go up. And this is what just blows my mind with her is she'll go to this like next level with things. Now, what they're talking about specifically in this is the fact of the next day after this event took place, right? She called out of work, Gannon stays home from school so they're trying to piece together like okay what really happened here because if you remember when the fire thing happened she was like well i was gonna have him stay home from school to help fix the situation or whatever which in and of itself is bizarre the thing that i have seen though throughout is when something very bad happens people think they can't recover from it and i do not think you are a bad person I'm not. that's why i'm here no i don't I I've, do I've seen, people. I've seen that. And I know you told people not to get them to help you. But no, I'm not. not. <laughs> I would not. Notice how quick she is. I'm not. I know you tell that to people to get them to help you, but I'm not. It is so important to her what other people think about her. We are talking about an insanely insecure human being, which is typically one of the roots of narcissism, right? Now, again, I'm not a shrink or anything like that, but I'm just saying, like, my little dealings with these people, with, uh, you know, other people who definitely classified as narcissists by doctors, then my own personal experiences with people similar to this is where I kind of derive that from. But seeing how insecure she is to be living in the uh, Facebook chat rooms the way she was over this case, and going on the news with this whole thing about clearing her name, Gannon missing is an afterthought to her. So for him to go down this route, and again, yes, they do say this to people because he knows how to pander to her, right? And he knows that it's important to her to feel or to sense that. And so him sitting here saying like i don't think you're a bad person i think that you know something happened that you can't recover from and i do now i think she's a bad person that's my only difference and he probably does too but he's not going to say that but i definitely think some this is the i'm thinking the same thing as him some event took place that there was you can't go back from this it's life-changing in the way of ganon's gonna speak someone's gonna see this this is going to uproot life as we know it. So then the answer is to own up to that and the consequences, or I guess, and her thinking and others like her is to take the person out, 
right? I'm just, it, it, it baffles me. You say there's somebody not involved. I could walk you through it and prove it to you. And you guys have already had this predetermination. I don't mean you. I have the first time I spoke to you. You guys have already had this predetermination. That's what's going to happen. It's, it's already in your mindset. Yeah, because we have no other evidence pointing us elsewhere. Yeah. I love how he just follows that up with because we have no other evidence pointing elsewhere. <laughs> Again, this is the the like very monotone thing about him that I absolutely love. And I think that you need that for someone like Leticia because you see and listen to the phone calls with Al and the interview. She gets so easily worked up and hyped up because a, she's lying, right? She's probably full of adrenaline and this whole thing of trying to prove everyone wrong that I'm this wonderful person kind of a thing. But that just took me out when he said that when he's like because there's no evidence pointing elsewhere it's a very simple concept it's a very simple concept that just goes right over her head i'm not saying you don't love him i, I love him i'm mm -hmm. saying that even i have had times when my son rolled the right. basketball underneath that i wanted to turn around and right. do but, something and but, then i would have regretted it later but you're saying what you're saying to me is what you think is that i hurt him and I don't think it was intentional. Okay, but I didn't hurt Janice. Okay. The way that she'll use that voice sometimes, that little smarmy, I told you so kind of voice, like, you're thinking that I hurt Gannon. Okay, but I didn't. I mean, ugh, it just, it triggers me, y'all. I'm not lying. And I hate to use that word. It's the only word I can think of to use. I mean, it does something to me. But then you say that you're not willing to do it, whether you don't trust me or you think that there's these But you already involved. told me someone wasn't there based on the alarm. That's from what we can see. Yes, okay. movement in the basement, right. movement upstairs. But you've already told me that based on that, okay? But what you're not realizing is there's two sensors on that home, okay? Two. Two that can easily be manipulated. Again, does not phase her that this is completely abnormal to start picking apart evidence on technicalities while you're being interviewed about your missing stepson. I mean, this is so bizarre, and the fact that she is just completely numb to this dynamic flies all over me. It doesn't, you need to just disregard whatever I think, or really whatever anybody else thinks. If you have a truth, and if you have something that will help us find him, Really, the hell with me and everybody else and what we think. You should just cast that aside. All we, all I can follow is the facts of the cases they're told to me. I mean, someone had to say it, right? To actually have to finally remind her, disregard what people think about you. If you have a truth that will help us find Gannon, that's what's important. But she just, I mean, she just goes radio silent over that. She cannot handle that because that's the truth of the situation. But she knows that there is no finding him. She's so concerned with not only creating a narrative that people will believe, but it's almost like she is thinking that... She's more concerned about clearing her name in it than creating an actual believable narrative. Now, we have discussed some, and I think this plays into it, about the body dump location, where she put Ganon, because again, you know, from what I understand, she dumped him in an area where this body of water moves into Mexico or someplace like that. And so this could be where in her thinking, she's like, you know what, I'm going to blame it on the cartel. You know, his body will end up there, something happened, yada, yada. Well, of course, and thank God she's this, you know, inept. She misses, right? And bless his little heart, his body was found in the suitcase where it was at. So maybe, and again, I'm just trying to put myself in her world where she might be thinking, okay, they're never going to find him because he's in like wherever at this point where the, you know, assuming where this body of water took him. So she's thinking no body. And she, I'm sure she thinks the fact that they won't find the body is going to play into her favor or find it in another country or something like that, where she can blame it on, you know, the cartel or, or whatever the case may be. Um, but again, the fact that she is so hung up on what other people think and maybe she's doing that because she's convinced in her mind well they're not gonna they're gonna find the body and the narrative will go this way so i have to switch everyone's opinion that it's me away because they're gonna see that it was the cartel or it was this or it was that that it was anything but me the stepmother i can i don't know exactly i don't know well, where where do you know him to lie but to? i am 99 percent confident in scanning his life Okay, Leticia, where do you know him to last be? I want to help her, but I, I'm in a room, 
and he's already talking about all this in the courts and she will not answer that question. It is a basic question. Where do you know him to last be? She could say getting in the truck. She cannot say sleeping in his bed. She will not say. And again, I think it's just because she's lied so much. She's lied so much and the story is so convoluted. It's almost like she has to go radio silent. Now I'm sure at this point the investigators are like, oh my God, will we please just hurry it along? Number one, give us information to find Gannon which is just obviously not working. But number two, it's like, how long can she keep this up? About the whole bad, well, whatever. Tell, tell me about, if, if it's irrelevant, Leticia, help me. Because there's a big blood pool in the corner, there's spray on the wall. Because if I tell you anything about any of that, all you're going to say to me is, hey, I don't know. If you didn't do it, no, I will be your advocate. <laughs> Again, when faced with basic questions about hard evidence, she immediately just switches into this like teasing them thing. Well, I could do this, but if I tell you what really happened, then you're going to be da 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 or whatever it is she says, right? And this is the part where, the, again, these investigators know the grim truth at this point, right? They don't know 100% because they haven't found them, but it's very clear that something really horrible has happened to Gannon. It's been almost a month. She's acting this way. I mean, it's it's not a good look, right, for the outcome. And clearly we know what the outcome is now. Um, but this part is so frustrating to me. And again, I, I tip my hat to this guy because I, I would have made it five minutes into the interview. Okay, interrogation, whatever it is. I, I would not have lasted, right? She would have sent me over the edge. And when we get into this part where she's now trying to control the narrative again and get him off camera and go into another room, they know it's BS. They know there's nothing that she could tell them at this point. I mean, other than where the body is, right? But all this narrative she keeps creating, it's just that. It's a false narrative. What? Do we know each other? No, I... Why would I care? If you didn't do it, and it helps me find Gannon? I didn't do it. Okay, well right. then help me find out who did it. Who did what? That to Gannon in his Don't room. Don't walk to Gannon in his room. There's a pool of blood in the corner. Okay. That's Gannon's blood. Okay, so you're saying... Now, this is, this is where I have a hard time knowing what it is. You're like, okay, trust you or not, right? You're saying there's a pool of blood... Albert said, saucer side, because I'm sure you had him say all this, because I'm sure you were there, or whatever. Okay. In his room, and you said something about, what did you say? What'd you... The way she tries to act like they're bad for even considering that something bad happened to him. I mean, it's that level of gaslighting that just throws me off. And the way she tries to add these little nuggets, like, I'm sure you're there, but whatever. Like, she's so much smarter than them. I mean, I question how this person could even be any level of teaching children or anything. Her disconnect with reality and common sense, and I'm not saying that in the context of I think that she is not accountable for what she did because this is somebody who knows right from wrong but has a no concept of what's you know just in their face just a complete lack of common sense is astounding to me it is absolutely astounding and, and that's what i listen to you do that to al to where you're making it. him guess what happened to Ken. i don't want him to guess well, no, you, well, you're, you're asking me to guess. No, no, I was... And this is another part of it that flies all over me, is this guessing game, because she does know what happened. And she's holding it out like a carrot in front of everybody and making them guess. And even he's calling her out on it. He's like, you did this to Al, now you're doing it to me. And I think she revels in that attention and that power, right? But it's also probably a scary thing, because if you're in her situation, you're also trying to stay out of trouble, which clearly didn't work out for her. Um, um, but she keeps doing this where it's like this, like possibly this, possibly that, but I'm going to need protection and I'm going to need this. Well, then they walk up to that doorway to open it and, oh, hold on, let's go over here. And I mean, thank God they were able to find his remains, right? Because this would have kept getting dragged on and dragged on and dragged on, if not. We can protect people. We can protect you, family, if this is involved. Now, I've worked South American death groups. I've worked gangsters. I've worked organized crime. Mm -hmm. None of that stuff rings true with what happened here. <laughs> I mean, exactly. And he's going to call her out in this next clip about the whole thing because it's ridiculous. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous that she would even try and go with this narrative. I mean, how, how, is, okay. how is a very organized gang going to come into a house in Colorado Springs? Who said it? A house? Why does it have to be in the house? See, that's, that's where, where he last was. 
Are you going to make me guess where he was then? No, I'm I'm telling you, you're not going to listen to me. You already just said that his last was in the house. But see, you're again, you're going back to you care what I think. You shouldn't care what I, I think. I do care what you think. You want to know why? Because I care about my how people think of me because I am not that kind of person. That's and if, why. And if you can point me to a different person, then I can help you. I gave him. And therein lies some of the truth. I do care what people think because I'm not that kind of a person. Well, clearly she is because she did that, right? And this whole thing where he's like, are you going to make me guess? You know, again, and she, no. Yeah, you know, she just acts so like, oh, what? Like innocent about it. It's absolutely baffling to me. And again, I just give him more praise because I would not have been able to stand there, sit in there that this long with her. I would have just been so frustrated. But again, that's why they do what they do for a living, right? Because they're good at it. Um, and dealing with these personality types like her. As you know, in here, I even have what you entered in your phone. The stuff that you've entered and deleted. Like um, blood is spurting from an arterial bleed. Direct pressure not controlling. Do what? I didn't look this up. It's from your phone. Blood is what? Spurting from an arterial bleed. No. Well, somebody did from your phone. I don't like my stepson. No. I don't like my stepson. Should I get a divorce? I mean, my God, you want to talk about being exposed? Those damn internet searches. I mean, I would have loved to have seen her face up close when he read those out. First of all, now, okay, let's just all agree here. If our Google searches were, especially as true crime people, if our Google searches were to be exposed like that, they'd be like, oh, what? Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, they would find some, like, creepy stuff on there. Um, you know, research stuff like that or whatever. However, I'm going to go on the assumption that most of us have not created, or I'm sorry, done things like Leticia, right? Uh, or also Grant Amato comes to mind. Most any of these people in this, this day and age who do these, like the things that they will Google after they commit the crime is mind blowing to me. And that's just my thing. It's like when people commit the crimes and then Google every aspect of it, I'm just like, you know, why would you look the thing up about the spurting art or uh, vein or whatever it is? Why would you even do that? Now the other thing right there, which we already can tell because it's why we're here. I don't like my stepson. Yeah, but again, these next few clips we're going to watch where he's just calling her out. Look at deny, deny, deny. What are you talking about? That wasn't me. And then she'll flip it to saying that some of them could have been this. So it's like she then again is low key admitting that, okay, they are mine, right? But she goes back and forth because again, I think people with her personality type are not able to really think in like these bigger picture terms. It's what's right in front of me right now. So even though she's denied that these are hers, in a moment when something comes up that she can explain away, she forgets that, right? And it's like, oh, I can explain this one away. Well, if you're explaining this one away, then you must be now saying that these other ones came from your phone too, like guilty by association type thing stalk cheating i'll stalk instagram i'll stalk cheating in colorado springs catch i'll stalk cheating how to get blood out of sheep out of sheep mm -hmm. i want immunity the blood, the blood out of sheep was because we always had like every, always nosebleeds if i ever looked the blood That's out of sheep it was nosebleeds and I, figured I, it I, might never, be something. I didn't ever look up anything about an artery or something unless it went from something else it's on your phone. And I never looked up anything about my stepson unless someone else did. The, the reason I brought up gangs is you you uh, looked up, I want immunity because it was gang related. Yeah, that last one took me out. I bet the jury sitting over there rolling their eyes. They have got to be like, are you kidding me? We have had to come in here for eight weeks or whatever to listen to this woman's BS and a slap in the face face not only to poor little Gannon but the family members that loved him right I mean it's absolutely disgusting I want immunity because it was gang related I mean she literally tells on herself with these damn Google searches and then has the audacity to sit there and wonder why she's being questioned like this but again that, that wasn't me unless someone else did it well who do you think did it the toddler you know what I'm saying I mean come on and this sounds like find me a new husband Find me a rich guy who no, wants to take care of his kids. The the new husband is just because he, Albert already knew that was about the lady Debbie Cheryl who had a 
who wanted to find a new husband after 35 or something. He picked me about Amazon. Like a lot of these can have nothing to do with this. It doesn't. I get it. And see, that's what I'm talking about, where she'll come up with excuses for some of them, but then other ones are like, oh, I didn't do that. That was somebody else. Oh, but that one I can excuse. And I mean, her true colors right here, she wants a rich man that takes care of his kids. Really, I'm surprised that she didn't have one in there. A rich man that takes care of me. And things like this, right? Um... I just, I cannot with the Google searches. She has multiple, like usually in these cases, we'll see one or two things where it's like, okay, so the person is on tape at Walmart buying all the weapons that were used and the cleanup tools that were used in said crime 20 minutes later, right? Um, the person Google, like one thing. She has so many multiple things like that. The audacity for her to then try and lie her way out of it. Like if I was her at this point, way before this point, I would have been like, y'all, I, I, here's what happened. Okay. I, I just, this is what happened. I'm not going to waste your time. You know, you got me red hands, a whole nine yards. Right. I just, but the fact that she is going like for an Olympic marathon here and like the, the sport of lying just shocks me. Can I, spray, can I spray paint wood? Spray paint wood? Well, we always wear new wood. Yeah. I'm doing all the work for my stepkids and their mom doesn't help. Oh, that bothered me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame Oh, them. yes, because I wanted them to be mine. Like, like what about <laughs> I need to be their child. Hit and run. You Googled a lot on Leticia and traffic accident, hit and run. I didn't hit anybody. No? I think the hit and run thing could have been her searching out the thing that she called into the school with. Now, again, it makes me wonder. I truly wonder, and this is my opinion. This is not fact. This is not any kind of thing other than just my opinion here. All right, and thoughts. I wonder how many bodies this woman has to her name. And I'm not talking about in the bedroom. I'm talking about like six feet under. Um, because the, some of the stuff that surrounds her... Like that's happened in the past with other, you know, husbands and stuff like that, and just people in general. I'm just like, because at first when I heard this, I was like, she probably, could, I could see her hit being a total hit and run person, her hitting somebody, right? Um, I'm like, who knows the other things that she's done in her lifetime? Uh, because definitely to get to this point with Gannon of what she did to him, even prior to what she did, like whatever led up to that. I mean, I don't think this is a one-off event, right? I think she's probably, you know, taken a hand to her other children, uh, and as well as other people i mean i can't imagine behind the scenes what was going on and one person in the comment section i can't remember who it was and i don't have it pulled up right now but they may, they brought up a good point um with in regards to leticia and al's uh, relationship and you know he was you know, doing the work thing and traveling doing all this and that might have been what gave it some longevity was being separated like that to that extent for her to be able to kind of spend her lies and do her thing and maybe just come off as like a normal level of extra or high maintenance or something like that. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Um, but, you know, I think back to some of my friends who were married to, you know, spouses in the military and what that was like where they would go away for, you know, a extended amount of time or their job or whatever. And it created this kind of very unique situation where you just weren't around each other to that level day in, day out like that. Um, and so I wonder you know, how that played out. And then I also wonder about her previous relationships, what those were like, you know, what took place. I mean, look at the situation with uh, Harley's father where, you know, she kept that, uh, the, uh, the fact that he died of an overdose from her. Now, I don't have an issue. I can completely see a parent keeping that information from a child, right? At a certain age, time, length of time and all that. It's the fact that Harley had to find out on the internet, like however long later that I'm like, what? You know, I mean, bless her heart for finding that information out that way. I mean, I can't imagine, right? I can see the reasoning behind that, but also, you know, it makes me wonder because I do think that Leticia drugged Gannon like 100% uh, with a hydrocodone. I don't think that he was just taking that. I think that was part of some of the events that happened. So it makes you wonder, you know, what is, else has she done to other people in her past? I want to be able to have an emotional, raw conversation. Let's do it now. I can't. I mean, we can't go anywhere. Where do you want to go? Because I, I know people are sitting Nobody's here. Nobody's sitting there. Okay, someone's watching from there. They are in the other room. It's okay. the district attorney. Do you want me to tell them they can't watch? No, I want to talk to someone in a raw, 
real conversation so you can see truly in my heart situation now again this is where she's really just circling around and coming to this we're gonna really go in for it i want to have a real conversation here and this is what's gonna happen and, and as we's like let's do it now well no we can't you know and it's just like well girl what do you want to do do you just want to be like you know what you're right leticia you just go on home you can go for the day i mean that's where i'm just like where does she think this is going to end and then she would knock on the door but as soon as i give you information what's going to happen is someone's going to say well you were involved with this person. You were cheating with this person. You were doing this. I'm just giving you scenarios. But that's, that's a, a lot better situation than you're but, in right but now. But what if I wasn't? That's my thing. And that that's where the burden of proof, I can't, I can't depend my life on the burden of proof to be involved with just someone thinking that I'm just a bad person. I did not hurt him. Again, main concern is what people think about her with the Gannon thing. And like he said in the thing, he's like, well, at least this will be a better place that you stand now if we're thinking the other thing. Because what I think she was trying to go with at this point is the cartel thing. She was hooked up with someone else. Now, she'll go down this whole tangent of this Angela woman and a threesome that they, her and Al were going to have with this woman. And that it was going to be this, that, and the other. Can you imagine Leticia being willing to do that? There is no way. She she is so jealous and insecure there's absolutely no way but then to try and blame this on this third party person which she's done numerous times right i mean at this point it's like she's blamed so many different people but again that's where i just think she was really going to try and go with this gang cartel type thing thinking oh his body will show up in mexico or whatever i mean i'm not in her head thank god Leticia, there's an 11 year old kid again we have to go back there 11 year old kid injuries in the house now we know that taken and you don't come to law enforcement for this was this was a law enforcement but person no, there's I, no think... Barbara. I mean my god and this is the reality of it that makes everybody just want to pick her up by her ears right is at the center of this is an 11 year old missing boy and the things that she is concerned about are so not that and it's so utterly frustrating and it's just you know this is the part that i think really makes this case hit home for i know me and i'm assuming a lot of other people because so many of you that i've talked with kind of say the same thing that i do where there's something about this case there's something about leticia that really gets to me more so than some of the other cases do and i think this is part of it where it's just at the the center of this is this boy who clearly you know didn't stand a chance against this woman who was his stepmother for god's sakes right she's known him for years so then the unknownness of what he went through in the years leading up to this and obviously in the moments leading up to the end of his life is just bone chilling to me yeah, because okay. I, and I, that's, I wouldn't have said stuff like that if i was trying to mislead i was just being whatever an hour because he was making me upset that's all the dad of a kid who's is not finding his son because, because i'm also the stepmother who helped him get the kids and he wouldn't have gotten them without me so yes Okay, now that part right there is so telling to me, the way she goes into that, where he's being reality, like, first of all, she's saying, oh, I wouldn't have said that, but being misleading, I was just upset, which is like, what? And then he calls it out, thank the Lord, you know, because the father of a son who's missing is getting upset. I mean, yeah. But then she goes into that whole narrative, well, if it wasn't for me, he wouldn't have gotten the kids. And therein lies the real Leticia. From Gannon's age. Mm -hmm. And from the amount of time that he's been missing, he is most likely dead. But what I'm saying is, as a parent, is that maybe because you're, like, used to saying that or something, but is that something, like, as a parent you would want to hear? The fact that she tries to gaslight him and make him feel guilty for even suggesting that... I mean, I cannot believe that aspect, but again, this is one of her tools that she uses, I guess you could call it, to try and do whatever it is she's trying to accomplish, because at this point, I honestly just don't know if she's trying to get out of trouble, just play a game. I don't know what her end goal would be on this day. I do think part of it is she thinks she's going to go home, maybe. How could you have, like, possibly say that when you clearly began in walking leaving on Monday. Now this part right here again where she goes over the evidence 
so confident. Well, you saw this. How could you say that? Now, again, remember when asked before, when's the last time you saw him? When's this and that? She won't answer these questions, right? Because she can't. Because, I mean, she knows she can't, I guess, which is why she does it. But she'll go back to things like this. Okay, was this the last time you saw him then? Like, what happened after that? Like, she doesn't have an excuse for it. But she will weaponize it immediately to use against somebody else. You're in jail, Letitia. And unless you tell me that somebody else did this, you're the only one that did it. No, I didn't do it. But I'm telling you. But I didn't. She sounds like a little kid there, but I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You know, I, that wasn't my hand in the cookie jar. You know, I'm just like, oh my God. I love you. He's like, you're in jail, Leticia. It does not sink in with her. That It's like, this is where I'm just confused on it. You know, because he's, he lays it out so simple. This is not hard to understand. If you don't tell us who did this, then it's clearly the evidence is pointing to you doing it. But she just thinks that by saying, but I didn't do it. Okay, that doesn't matter. The evidence says otherwise. What could you be scared of at this point? Reprisals? No, uh, the fact that I mean, you don't have, apparently you would have found some of this already if you would have had the resources. That's what scares me. Again, she's going to gaslight them and blame them and put them down, right? I'm like, oh, my God. I don't even think she knew what the word reprisals meant. <laughs> I think it just went over her head. She was probably like, oh. she's like an appraisal. You know what I'm saying? But, again, this is where it does not make sense. And this this tape right here, so, so much of the evidence, I'm sure the jury was like, I mean, come on, right? This right here is the nail in the coffin for her as far as I'm concerned. So your story makes no sense. And what it goes back to now okay. is that you can't take responsibility for what happened to I, Gannon. I didn't do anything to Gannon, sir. You can't insert someone else in here unless you're going to tell me who it is. Okay, I didn't do anything to Gannon, sir. That's fine. But then you would tell me who it is if you I didn't do else. anything to Gannon, sir. Did he do it to himself? Okay. And that's the whole thing. I mean, he's asking these point blank questions. That's all she can say is that she didn't do it, but she will offer nothing else except all these excuses. Now, as we've seen as time went on, she came up with more and more and more and layers and layers upon layers and all this stuff. But she's not willing to look at the obvious. She's not willing to go down that road because she knows what really happened. And that's what's so frustrating and heartbreaking about the case. You can. I'm far from a hero. But you can be. Because I'm a parent. You were a parent not was, hurt a child. You're a parent who was left behind to deal with his stepson oh, and stepkid. Is that a problem? No, you it's a problem a, when something like something like this a, happens a, in the house. It's not a problem to take care of our children. Then what happened? That's not a problem. That's not a problem at all. Like for you to say that to someone, it's hurtful. That's what's hurtful. That's what's hurtful. That it's a problem to take care of the kids. It clearly was a problem. Now you saw how he tried to pander to her being like, but you were left behind because this is what this is what she says, whether she says it indirectly or directly. If you look at her her Google searches, the things she says with Al, the things that are important to her, she did feel left behind. She did feel unappreciated. She did feel like they were a burden. And but then again in the moment she wants to turn it around. And that's just where I, I question how she was able to maneuver in life on a daily basis. I truly do. I mean, a lot of these people that we study here, I feel the same way of, but this one especially, I'm just like, how was she able to go to the grocery store and, and get in one piece, right? And have any form of a conversation with anybody because she is so all over the place. I mean, there's nothing that is in touch with any sense of and I don't want to see reality because I think she's in touch with reality. I don't want to make it like I think that she, you know, this was an excusable event that took place. Delusional might be a better word for it. Um, but maybe also just so self-consumed, so self-centered, so selfish that, you know, in my thought opinion, it's like she's unable to just, you know, go from point A to point B without having next level interactions with people. Why? Would I hurt our child? I had everything in the world. Why? I have no motive. None. Don't have the first motive. Everything I wanted in my life, I had it. Again, I think this gives us another peek into that. Everything I had in my life, I wanted, I had it. 
there i think that that goes to show something i think that part of it is she was feeling left behind she was like stuck at home with the kids doing this doing that whatever animosity she had towards landon whatever animosity she had towards al i think was also then transferred over to ganon and i think that she was bitter about it and i think it sent her into a rage at times and obviously that rage you know got the better of her this time and ended up taking ganon's life you controlled the way that law enforcement responded. I did. So now it's my fault that they... Yes, by you saying he's going, walking in in there, to play with a friend. Had people in there doing a supposed crime scene, and now you have all this stuff after you let people live there. And now you want to look at me and say something. Sir, I did not hurt Gannon. Now, and with the crime scene thing again, right? Now, remember, she tried to blame Al for this. Well, not Al, but saying, well, the cops let you in there. And, you know, they shouldn't have done this and that and whatever. And again, at a very early stage in this, she was already going about technicalities in the case, which is not, I mean, this is bad, right? Um, this was not normal. This was complete red flag territory. And again, she's going to pull it with him. And what's also interesting about these type personalities, and we see it here with Letitia, is how they think they can go head to head with the FBI or taking the stand. I would love to see if she takes the stand. Are you a good person? Yes. And you do bad things? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But you, if you had any key to telling us where Gannon is, you would tell it to us if you were a good person. Would you not? I mean, doesn't know what to say about that one, right? Because it's true. You know, the fact that she's going to get him, are you a good person? Do you do bad things? Again, shows her true colors. She it's so concerned, now I'll say it a hundred times in this video, about what other people think. And I think that that's what shocked the public when this first came out because she immediately took to social media and the media to, you know, write her name in this. And everybody was like, what? Like, it was so bizarre. You know, and on one hand, people can understand where it's like, look, this is what happens in cases a lot of times where social media will convict the person everyone's got an opinion this that, and the other but very rarely do we see somebody make that their entire focus over the missing child or in this case the missing child spouse whatever it happens to be right uh the way that leticia did i mean she went on a campaign right and even when she was on that campaign it was so obvious what she was doing that it just it unsettled people but the fact that she's not willing to let that go in the face of all of this damning evidence and again like these personality types you know know-it-alls that type thing that's what's so frustrating because you can never tell them different they know it all is it too many to count i just haven't sat down and done it it's yeah. quite a few yeah. um and then variations of maybe like the quincy brown story has different branches of that story Correct. Uh, the um, Eduardo story has different branches on that story. Yes. The Gannon was playing with a friend and didn't come home. Are there different branches to that story? Yes. Uh, and then we get the pregnant woman with a, a money in her belly story. Different story. Right. Listen to all the different versions that they told. That was just th this little bit right here, right? I mean, there's branches, like you said, to each of these stories. And I think what she would do is she would go down a road, and when she saw it wasn't going to work or there was evidence to the contrary, she would recant and then try another avenue with it. I mean, obviously, we know what happened at this point, right? But that's just what she was doing. And again, she was so lost in it. She was so consumed with writing her name, trying to turn the focus away from her, that she didn't see that this is completely bizarre. This is not how these cases go and she also seems to forget that these people do this for a living the fbi law enforcement they deal with these kind of situations they know what normal things that take place in these kind of things are and of course there's one-offs and he'll describe some of those situations to her but this is almost a classic like the parent had something in this case the step parent had something to do with the missing child but again it doesn't matter if there was hidden cameras in the house and they showed her a video of her doing what she did to gannon she would deny it she would deny it right that's just the type of personality that she is that's not going to ever change I personally think that wherever she's going, which is, I personally think she'll end up in prison for the rest of her life, she's going to fit right in, right? She's going to fit right in. Now, what will be interesting in that dynamic is to see how it goes over. I would imagine that she'll have to, 
you know, being some kind of solitary or segregation away from the uh, the other inmates, general population, uh, just due to the nature of her crimes. But I think what she'll do is, number one, she's going to be a feisty inmate, if you will, but the conniving, the scheming, the lines, stuff like that, like she'll continue on with that. I don't think it will go over well with the other inmates in addition to what she did. Now, I don't know how it works in women's prisons. I don't 100% you know, know how it works in men's prisons either, but the stories that we hear of, you know, these type of people who commit these crimes are often centered around men committing crimes, whether they're of a SA variety or a violence against women and children and how that fares for them in you know prison so with a woman going to prison with a crime like this that's so heinous but in addition to that the way she went about it and just her personality type being so vile i'm curious to know like okay what uh what is that like? You know, what is that like? Meaning, what is her experience going to be like with other female inmates? If I'm correct, she's kept away from everybody right now, but I could be wrong. Correct me in the comments, please. Um, but I'm curious to know, I mean, if anyone has any kind of experience, whether, you know, you've been in not a situation like Leticia's, but say you did some time, you know how it goes down, or you've worked with an inmate population, you kind of know the gist, whatever. I'm curious to hear, because I am very curious, like, will she be able to acclimate to any form of a life in prison outside of being segregated and even in a segregated population you know i mean number one do they have that for women's prisons like uh you know uh, what is it called protective custody or whatever um because i just can't fathom her having a decent time not that i'm hoping she does okay uh but i'm just curious what it's going to be like for her once she gets there because in my opinion i do not see any way that she is going to get out of these charges right when this goes to the jury i don't see it happening at all now that's a wrap this is a long video so if you're still watching drop a double blue hearts for ganon because hearing this and just knowing i mean what happened well we don't 100 percent know right but we get the gist of it and then seeing this right here it's just so ingrained oh my gosh so anyways thank you for hanging out thank you for watching this i'll be reading the comments down below and until we gather around my old little coffee cup from black mountain north carolina i'll see you soon